Welcome back to HackCode. In this video, we're tackling an essential problem for code interviews, meeting news from lead code. This problem is great for learning interval comparisons. We'll explore two approaches, brute force and optimized sorting. Let's break down the problem step by step and understand how the solutions work. So actually this question is from lead code premium. Since I don't have access to lead code premium, I'll be solving the same question using lint code. The question is exactly same. Don't worry about that part. Okay. So sit back, relax and let's dive in. So what is the problem statement given? Given an array of meeting time intervals consisting of start and end times. So basically they have given the list of lists. Okay. So here wherein each list inside the list represents the start and end time of a particular meeting. And they given the condition that start time would be less than end time. Okay. Determine if a person could attend all the meetings. So we just need to determine if a person can attend all the meetings. So what are the cases a person can attend two meetings? Like if they are overlapping, right? So we just need to find that overlapping intervals. That's all. Nothing much. So what are the constants given here? So intervals length is in the enclosure range of 0 to 10 power 4. So what should we learn from this? So basically a computer can perform 10 power 7 to 10 power 8 operations per second. Okay. So if our complexity can fit in within n log n, this could be solved. Okay. So because like I'm thinking of the corner case where a computer can perform only 10 power 7 operations. So if can perform 10 power 8 operations, we can do that in n square, which is brute force approach. Okay. So we should try to solve this in O of n log n time complexity. That's what we have to learn from this one. Okay. Next constraint is interval of i length is equal to 2. Basically, this list is of length 2. Okay. It has only short and end time. So evident that it has only length 2. And what else they given here? So start of i and end of i is in the enclosure range of 0 to 10 power 6. So basically, this two can be enclosure range of 0 to 10 power 6. Okay. This is a special case C. So if a meeting ends at 8 and its next meeting starts at 8, a person can attend the meeting, right? So that's what this case is about. So this is not a conflict. Okay. So what are examples given here? So given intervals are 0, 30, 5, 10, 15, 20. So here output is false because a person can attend all these meetings. Like there are overlapping cases where like these two overlap, right? 0, 30 and 5, 10. And also 0, 30 and 15, 20 will overlap. So a person can attend all the meetings. So that's why we have to attend false, which is a Boolean. Okay. We just need to say true or false on the output. Okay. An example two, we have 5, 8, 9, 15. So basically we can see that there is no overlap between these two intervals, right? So that's why we have to return true. So same explanation is given here two times will not conflict. Okay. So we can see that it's asked in Facebook and Uber. This is the company tax we have. Okay. So what is the baller plate code given? So here we have a class solution wherein we have a method can attend meetings. Okay. So this takes intervals. This is a list of interval. Interval is a data structure that defined here. Okay. So what is the data structure defined here? So class interval, it uh, consumes object. So basically it inherits object here. So here they given us cell start and end. So basically here uh, they're not given as a list of list rather they given as list of intervals. So there could be also cases where list of list is given. We will explore both. Okay. So here a start and end time are defined as an uh, interval here. Okay. So our method can attend meetings, consumes intervals and returns the boolean. Okay. Before we get started, I want to remind you about our exclusive blind sign for post. This carefully curated collection covers essential coding interview problems to help you master the most common patterns and excel in your interviews. Whether you are prepping for fang level interviews or just sharpening your problem solving skills, these problems will ensure you are ready for anything. Even if the exact questions aren't asked, they cover all the important patterns. So be sure to check out our playlist and stay ahead of the competition. So firstly, let's understand the overlap condition guys. So for two intervals like start one and one and short and two, to overlap, what is the condition? So the overlap occurs if the two intervals are not completely separated. Like in the case, like this intervals, uh, like if it is a timeline, let's take this our timeline. Okay. If these two intervals exist in the case, like from here to here and, and here to here, that means that there is no overlap between these two intervals. Some relation should be there. Like there should be some hook like this case. Okay. Here this overlap. Okay. So this means that the interval one ends after interval two starts. So basically the, here we see right in this example. So here interval one ends after interval two starts. So here this is the first interval. This is the second interval. We see that first interval ends after the second interval starts. And also here second interval ends after the first interval starts. Right. So that means that like here we see that end two is greater than start one. So that's the conditions we have. So this is the basic condition we need to check if the overlapping is. So what are the conditions here to overlap? end one greater than start two and end two greater than start one. These two are the conditions should be satisfied for the intervals to be overlapping. So let's take our another example. What we have one five five seven. So here uh, this is not a overlapping case. So what is the condition we have even greater than S2? What is even five? S2 is what five? Five greater than five? No, false. So that's why here we're breaking it out. So for the cases where the next meeting starts right after this meeting, our condition is false. So that's how our solution works. Okay. 
so this is a full proof solution we have so this is how we should check okay so hope you got the idea of overlapping condition so now let's look into the brute force approach so what is the intuition here so basically the brute force approach involves comparing every meeting with every other meetings to see if there is any overlap and next is we check if the times for each pair of meetings overlap by ensuring one meeting starts after another ends okay so this is what we discussed right that's all so since no sorting is assumed we trade through all pairs of intervals so if they mention the sorting here the step is very simple for us we just need to compare side by side but we'll look into that later but let's focus on this brute force here okay so what is the algorithm here first step is loop through all intervals okay so for each interval i loop through all other intervals j except i so we should not uh, consider i in this iteration right so basically we can't compare the same interval with itself that's why okay ensure that i and j are different that's what we have in step 3 so now in step 4 check if intervals i and j overlap if as written false if no overlap is found in all comparisons return true so basically if one is overlap then it means that like he can't attend all the meetings right that's why we had to return false in between it's the optimization we don't need to check further okay so here we have this interval definition we just saw in the question so now let's look into code guys so firstly what we are doing loop through all the intervals so for i in range length of intervals and then in step 2 for each interval we have to loop through all the other intervals right that's why we have another loop here so here for j in range 0 to length of intervals okay so that's why we get the indexes from 0 to n minus 1 where n is the length of the intervals okay so here in step 3 we are ensuring that i and j are different so we are just checking if i is not equal to j this is required guys because like uh, we can't compare the same interval with itself right we need to check for different intervals that's why so in step 4 what we are checking check if intervals i and j overlap so this is the same condition we discussed right what we discussed here so here we just discussed these two conditions right so let me just pick it here so here we are checking if n1 greater than start 2 so here n1 is what so first interval i so i is n greater than j start okay that is start 2 okay next what we have to check is n2 greater than start 1 so n2 is what intervals of j dot n greater than intervals of i start so basically here we have this 1 and 2 are represented by i and j that's all nothing much guys so if this is the case that means that we have a overlap so that's why written false so after all the iterations done we just written true because if there is any overlap we would have written false here that's why we written true at the end to represent that there is no overlap guys so now in the other case like where we don't have the intervals uh, class defined like we have this interval class defined here right like start and end time so there would be cases where they would be just giving as a two dimensional list so in that cases what is the code different here so basically uh, we are accessing this list of list right so let's take this example guys so here list of list is 1 comma 2 and 3 comma 4 so here so this is our i1 this is our i2 so i mean like interval 1 interval 2 so here what we are checking so let's take this as i and this is as j and within this list we have this as 0th index and this is our first index this is also 0th index this is the first index okay so here what we are checking intervals of i1 so basically this is here end 1 and then end one greater than what we are checking j of 0 this is what start 2 this is the same condition we have right this case and then next what we have this is like j of 1 j of 1 is what here this is the this this one so basically this is what n2 greater than intervals of i 0 which is this one which is start so guys it's the same thing right so basically we are checking the same thing in a different fashion that's all so this is in the case like where they haven't defined as a intervals so it's like a list of list of integers this is simple like if we don't have any interval data structure defined if we had interval data structure defined this is how we do it if we don't have that defined we have to just access this list of lists that's all so rest of the code remains same so only difference is this that's all so what are complexes here the time complex is of n square because we compare each interval with every other interval right so here we are iterating till n range and then for each i here we going n steps that means that it's n into n right so for n times we're checking n times which is n square so it's evident right we'll get o of n square space complex is o of 1 no additional space used beyond the input so we're just using the input and uh, determining it's true or false right that's it like we don't use any other variables which grows with the size of the input so it's o of 1 space so i got the code ready here let me try running this so it's accepted for this case so let me try summoning this so this would be time loop exceeded because this is the O of n square solution and the computer can perform only till 10 power 7 to 10 power 8 range. So here this computer is performing in 10 power 7 range. So our solution is not scalable. So that's why we have to perform this in O of n log n time complexity. So let's look into that approach. How do you think we optimize this further? So do you think our sorting helps here? 
So basically, if we sort these intervals based on the start time, what can we achieve? We don't need to compare each interval with every other interval. We just need to compare the consecutive intervals. That is the current interval with the next interval. So here, let's take an example here, 0, 5, 1, 6. So here, this is the timeline, 0, 5, 1, 6. So here, what we need to check, we just need to check the start time of the second interval is less than the end time of the first interval. That means that these two overlap. So we can directly return false here because like the person can't attend all the meetings. So that's why it's very simple comparison. Like we don't need to compare everything. We just need to compare consecutive things. So here we are saving the number of comparisons we have to do. So like consider the case like we have unsorted case. So if we consider the unsorted case as previous, you must compare all pairs. So, so that is not optimal, right? So here if we sort this, we can get the job done within n log n because sorting takes off n log n, right? Time complex, that's standard. And then we just need to iterate to the for loop once to just check the consecutive intervals. That's all. That's the intuition, guys. So basically, we just need to check if the second interval's start time is less than the first interval's end time. If that is the case, we have the overlap, right? As we see here. So let's look into the approach here. So what is the intuition? So in this approach, we sort the intervals based on the start times. After sorting, we only need to check adjacent intervals for overlap because the meetings are arranged in an increasing order of their start times. Makes sense, right? We just discussed. This reduces the number of comparisons drastically compared to the brute force method. That's evident, right? Because we just need to compare the consecutive intervals. That's all. So what is the algorithm here? Sort the intervals based on the start time. And then step two is loop through all the sorted intervals. Next is to check if the current interval overlaps with the previous interval. So we just discussed it. We just need to check if start to less than the end one, okay? And step four, if any overlap is found, return false, otherwise return true after the for loop. So let's look at the code, guys. So first step, what we are doing, sort the intervals based on the start time. So for that, we are utilizing the sort method of list, okay? So here, we are specifying the start time as a sort key. That's all. This is the lambda expression we have. So if you're not aware of the lambda expression, lambda is like lambda input and output. So this is the basic uh, thing in Python. So the blueprint for the lambda function is lambda input and output. Input colon output. So here, what it takes is x input and then the output is what x dot start so here basically we are uh, returning start for that so here specifying we have to sort based on the start interval that's all and step two is to loop through all the sorted intervals so here we have to uh, loop in the range of one to length of intervals why because we have to compare the previous interval right for that like we just can loop from one to length of the intervals so at least we have one element left behind to compare so that's what we have here in step 3, we check if the current interval overlaps with the previous one. This is the same thing. This is S2 less than the E1. So here I represents the current interval and I minus 1 represents the previous interval. So we just need to check if the start time of the current interval is less than the end time of the previous interval. That's what we are doing here. If this is the case, we know that it's an overlap. That's why we return false because a person can attend all the meetings. So at the end of the loop, we just return the true because if there is an overlap, we would have written false here. So that's why we return true to say that a person can attend all the meetings. So now let's look at the case where like we have 2D list. So this is like list of list of int. Okay. So here everything remains same, but except this sort here, we are what we are specifying. We are accessing the zero element, which is a start time, right? We just discussed. So another time I'm giving the example one, two, three, four. This is the list we have. And then we're just accessing the zero element, which is the start time right here. So here we have lambda x, x of zero. That means that we just return the start time. Okay. Next is loop through the sorted intervals. So same step here. So here we are checking start time less than the end time. So here start time is what the zeroth element and end time is what the first element. So that's what we're doing here and everything is same. So what are complexes guys? So time complex is O of n log n due to the starting of intervals. The space complex is O of 1 because we're not using any data structure that goes with the size of the input. Also we are operating over the intervals which is the given input and the sorting would be done in, in place. That's why it's O of 1 space complex. Okay. So I got the code ready guys. Let me try running this. So this is accept a solution for this case. So let me try submitting this. So guys, this accept a solution for all the test cases we have. So congrats guys, you just learned the two approaches, brute force and the optimized sorting approach. So actually I faced this question in one of the interviews for the product based company. Hope this helps for your interviews as well. All the best. And that's a wrap on solving the meeting rooms problem using two different approaches. If you found this breakdown useful, drop a comment below and share your thoughts. Don't forget to like the video, spread the word to your fellow coders and hit the subscribe button for more in-depth coding tutorials. Also do follow on Instagram for the latest updates. See you in the next one.